Okay, so the question was asked, how do I read an NMAP scan? So this is what you guys did for your scanning, all right? So it did all the output. Ports hosts, all right, this will tell you what port is open on what port. So on our gateway, we have port 22. What is port 22? SSH. And what is SSH? Secure Telnet. And it has port 80 open. Sort of. It's TCP wrap, so that means you need to do extra things to make that thing work. When you look at our victim computers, you can see there's a lot of really cool stuff in here that's just amazingly fun to go play around with. What does the character generator port do? Port 19. It will send out a steady stream of characters A through Z, 0 through 9. And it will keep on doing that as fast as the network can allow it to pump out which is anywhere between 10 and 100 megs per second of just characters, right? So you could actually flood a network with just characters and then just go ahead and do your whole thing. If you really wanted to be evil and the uh, echo port is open on port seven, you loop that character generator around to echo because echo will then re resend out everything that it gets on it. So you can really then just go ahead and really seriously flood a network. And this is one of the reasons why they don't turn on temp simple TCP IP services in Windows or in Linux anymore, is because this is a really effective attack for just saturating bandwidth like that, right? No problem. Hook Echo to Character Generator, and you can just flood the network with a bunch of nonsense A through Z, 0 through 9. And that can actually be kind of a lot of fun, because then you slide your stuff in underneath that. Has daytime. Discard means it will drop anything that it gets. Quote of the day. So in just case you want to get a pithy quote, right? Has DNS going, IIS 6.0, all of the other good things that go along with it, right? So pretty straightforward. We know that it's either Windows 2003 or Windows 2008. RPC over HTTP. What does that mean? Remote procedure calls that I can send over hypertext transfer protocol. That means I can do stuff in web pages for remote procedure calls inside the Windows box kind of advanced, but kind of also an awful lot of fun to do, right? Because if I can mani manipulate remote procedures on the server itself over HTTP, all I need is port 80 open. And then some seriously good humor on the other part of whatever, and then they've got it open again here too. Microsoft firmware, point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. All right, so this computer is really kind of messed up. This one actually looks like you could actually have a lot of fun with it. If you look at host details, right, you see that it's Windows, a little Windows, a little bomb means that it's good to go. All right, that means you can have some fun with it. Accuracy, it thinks it's Windows Server 2003. Right, so once you know that, go out to where? National Vulnerabilities Database, go out to TechNet, find out what fun things you can do with Windows 2003. Tells you the ports that are used, right, whether they're open or closed, OS. TCP sequencing, this is kind of one of those things that you can try to figure out if you want to inject your own man in the middle attack. Knowing the TCP sequencing number is a really good thing to know about that. And then you can actually leave some comments on this if you want to, right? Number eight, another one of our victim computers. Kind of a little bit of a lockbox. This one isn't so easy, right? It only has a few things open. So it just has Microsoft terminal service as part of the web service. Right? So terminal services, that means it's listening in for remote desktop. That means it's actually listening in for that. So that service is up and running and able to make connections. Right? Thinks it's Windows 2003 or 2008. Number nine, that's our XP box. Right? HTTP proxy on port 5000 as a way to strip SSL. So there's some kind of interesting things going on with that victim box as well. Our Linux box doesn't show much. Right? Ubuntu, PHP, Ubuntu 4 with the Sue Show and Patch. Right? So what vulnerabilities are there in Ubuntu 4 now that we're up to version 13? Right? There's a whole lot of stuff that's missing out of that that could be a ton of fun. This one, a little bit less, right? On 11. It just tells you that it's Apache 220 on Ubuntu. It doesn't give you a version number. So you got to think about this one just a little bit more. Right? It's not pulling out a bunch of stuff about it. It thinks it's Linux 6.2 or 2.6.3.2 or 3.2.
it's pulling that data out of the kernel, so it actually was able to pull the kernel header out of that. Right? And now, this is one of our ESXi servers, which is off limits. We don't hack the ESXi servers because we share them with a lot of other people. Right? So, port sequences used, all the rest of it, what have they got? Port 80 open. So what happens, and this is sometimes one of the interesting things when you just go out and you go experimental on stuff. So its IP address was 192.168.203.16. Site security service, isn't that, well, yeah, I don't care. All right, so it takes you right to that web page, right? You can download the virtual appliance, the installer, the Linux installer. So we had people do this on the first day, right? So there's things that we can do here. We can actually go and check those ports and see what we've got. So all of our ESXi servers are going to be the same way, right? Then we start getting into our switches, Cabletron switches, our Enterosys switches, and other stuff that we've got, 6G or 6H. Go to the National Vulnerabilities Database, find out if Enterosys 6H or 6G has got a vulnerability, and then we can just go ahead and attack a switch because switches are more fun to attack than other people's computers. If you own the switch, you own the network. Right? And that's just a generic given on this one. Right? Then we start getting into the students' computers. Microsoft Windows Server, Server, Server. There's our printer on 54. Right, so what ports are they using? Port 21 FTP, port 1 TCP closed. So port 21, what's port 21? That is FTP. But if we know it's a laser jet, can we go in there and turn on the administration for that laser jet and then divert documents off to someplace else? Yes, we can. All right. And then all the other students' computers, Windows 7, ports used. Port 23 is going to be open on every single Windows box because that is a false positive, right? Port 23, what's port 23? I'm sorry, what was that? Telnet. So Telnet will look like it's open on every single Windows box because of the way Windows 7 and Windows 2008 actually respond to a scan, right? So it's not really open, the scanner thinks it's open, and not all scanners are perfect, all right? You get something called a false positive in here that says something's actually open, but it's not really. And this is really kind of classic with some of the versions of Windows. I always tell you that port 23 is open, but it's not really, all right? And then we kind of go through here to 12, Windows 7. So these are all the student computers. So these are all fair game for you guys. Trying to break into other people's student computers is okay. If you walk away from your computer and leave the screen unlocked, that's on you. Hopefully you won't wake up with a happy sheep on the back of your thing. Our gateway, but that's essentially how you read this, right? Our gateway is pretty well strong lockbox kind of thing, right? That one's going to be really, 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 really hard to break into, right? If you want to see the topology of the network, just go to the topology tab, click on fisheye, and then you can use the center wheel of your box to pull things out. You can move things around. You can say, this is the box I want. And you can actually then go and then see the Nmap output for that specific box. You can also go ahead and bring up the topology, the host details on that one. So the topology will help you flip things through. Red means it's bad. Red means that there's things you can do with it. Green means it's pretty secure. Yellow means there might be a tail hold on this one. Right? If you see the little lock box here, right? 203.1, that means that this is going to be really, really, really hard to break into. So the topology is a good way of just visually seeing stuff that's got some issues. All right? So green is good, red is bad. Ports hosts, again, you just click through if you want to see what they've got. So ESXi server, again, it's all that kind of good stuff. But it's all pretty straightforward. So this guy's running something, uh, Argonaut EM Web. Right? So if we're curious about that host details, that's 20326. It's our Cabletron. But what else can we find out about Argonet EM Web? It's an embedded web server that's actually on that. So are there vulnerabilities with that embedded web server? Right. But that's essentially how you read the output from Nmap. Does kind of make sense?
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So again, topology, red is what? Red is bad. Red means you can do stuff with it. So if you click on it to isolate it, right, it has a little lockbox. That means it may not be as easy as you think it's going to be. But if it doesn't have one, right, you can just click on it, and it will give you everything. You can trace route to it, get your IPv4 host name, anything else it's got cooking, what all of its services it's running, right, and how it found them. Any X reports, all those things were closed, any kind of special fields. Anything that it found out about it is going to be here in this little under pop-up thing. Yep, services tab is a lot easier. If you want to find out who all is running the same services, the only problem is that you scanned your box, so the services tab is going to have a whole lot of stuff that doesn't really exist. Because remember, with Nmap, if you scan your box, it's going to show every single port open on that. So, so it's kind of a false positive. So then when you put in the target, if you would put in, uh, if you know what, you know what your IP address is, so can you put in the range before your IP address and then like comma? Yeah, you could take your IP address out. After your IP address. Yeah, you can take your IP address out. You can range it. You can do it in smaller increments. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways of manipulating the output. We just did the real simple dirty one to get you guys started today. So any, any other questions? You guys good? You guys comfortable with reading Nmap output? Kind of, sort of, maybe? Yeah, you pretty much so need to leave anything that's under 30 alone on the network just because other people are going to be relying on those services. So anything that's above 30 is pretty much so OK. The victim boxes are the exception to that rule. If CC proxy is up and running, you may actually see that on their computer and see the vulnerabilities associated with CC proxy. You can if they're up and running it. That's actually really kind of cool. Again, Nmap is a really good tool for finding vulnerabilities in operating systems and some of the software that ri resides on it. Right? Does it kind of make sense? Are you into something? Awesome. Good man. All right, any other questions? Are we good? Okay.